Hey guys, I hope you're well. Um, my friend Blitzy and I would like to make it one last Linux encouragement video. That's what I'll call it. Well, that's what it is. A Linux encouragement video for hams. I've been listening to the band. And uh, don't get worried, guys. The CB band stops at 405. Hang on, man. I'll reposition things. Okay, guys. I think I've got things fairly well squared up here, as best as I can do. I just talked to Kyle, and he has a USB microphone that he uses for his online socializing and gaming. And he suggested I buy one and said that they're really, really cheap. And um, his has gives him great audio. So... I'm going to do that and use simple screen recorder in the future after I get a microphone. Because, um, you know, it's it's kind of been my shtick here at Ye Old Landfill um, to just point and shoot. But my shtick sucks. <laughs> anyway, man, I wanted to mention, I wanted to do a little recap of why I love Linux on my ham radio desk and for all the other things I com use a computer for. Now, I mentioned before, I have never used an SDR dongle or I've never used, and I've never used a computer for SDR applications. I have zero experience with Linux and SDR software. <clears throat> so having said that, I use my machine mainly for um, for web usage and logging, and that's about it. And that's and and text editing, well, and video editing and uh, photo manipulation for my thumbs, and you know, I use it for <laughs> a lot, and it serves me well. But I don't use it for SDR uses. Um, I wanted to recap again, though, why I'm so enamored with Mint Linux. Um, it's actually Linux Mint um, is the name of the software that I use. <laughs> okay, let me run through the benefits real quick. The software is free. Free software. There is some proprietary paid for software available but not very much man um free software no upgrade nightmare i'll come back to that <clears throat> linux is clean the user interface the desktop it's clean it's fast it's simple um it's not confusing and the Linux equivalent of the Windows control panel, I wanted to take a look at that with you guys. Um, control panel, we'll call it, is not confusing. The Windows control panel was quite good back in the day. And I'm talking XP days. Um, by the time Windows 7 came along, it, the Windows control panel became a nightmare. Okay. Okay, so back to my benefits. Clean, fast, simple, not confusing, free software, no upgrade nightmare. It's powerful as hell. Fast boot time, fast shutdown time, almost instant. No rebooting or shutting down. There's no need I close the lid on my laptop and it goes to sleep and um, I'm, it's, you know what I mean? That's all I do. I, there are people that are running Linux systems for years. There's just no need for a shutdown or reboot. There's no registry file like Windows has to crank through while it boots. Um, no registry file to become more and more corrupted with time and with the installation and removal of software. You know, ultimately um, making your computer so sluggish that you need to reinstall the operating system and everything else. <laughs> you know, not an issue with Linux. Okay, um, let me see. I, okay, let's just start. Uh, let me minimize this. Oh, here. Let's bring that back. 
This is a default action for Windows, for window tiling in Linux. And that is if I grab this window and, oh, I ran my mouse into my tripod. <laughs> if I grab this window and slide it off until my cursor hits the edge, see how that half of the screen um, became opaque? I'll let go of the window and that happens. Let me start another instance of the file manager. I'll do the same with that one. Oh, you see how they connected nicely? That's nice. I love the behavior of Windows and Linux. When they, when they touch, they snap slightly. Okay, let me take do the same with this one. And there you go. You can tile two windows side by side, which could be really handy for file management. Uh, anyway, if you t drag it away from the edge of the screen, it goes it reverts back. Okay, you can disable that function. I'm not going to confuse. Well, I'll, we'll do it while we're in control pan while we're in the system settings. Okay, <laughs> I keep wanting to call it control panel, but here it is. That's all there is. It's clean. It's simple. It's not loaded with tons and tons of stuff that you have no idea what it does. The items in your system settings application are pretty self-explanatory and they're in they're in logical self-explanatory categories like appearance for example. You know, that's where you change your themes and I've never dealt with fonts. I've well I have installed Microsoft True Type fonts. I haven't on this system. Um you really don't need them anymore. This is where you can change the different effects that the, that the OS has and um, backgrounds. We've looked at the backgrounds um, before in the last video, I believe. Preferences we looked at. Oh, no, we didn't. I'm thinking of the video that was, I recorded it and it ended up being turned 90 degrees thanks to Samsung, so I deleted it. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I may think that I've talked about things before when we haven't. Um, I w let's show you what hot corners do. Man, there's a house flying here about driving me nuts, man. So let's enable this lower left hand hot corner, okay? What do we want to do? Well, you can run a command. I could make it open my word processor every time I slide my uh, mouse down to that corner. Or I could make it open my logging program or any other program. But for for now, let's just leave it to show all workspaces, okay? <clears throat> let's open up another window. Um, and if I slide my mouse down to the lower left-hand corner, those should go away. Um, wow, it's letting me choose my workspace. Oh, that's what I've got it set for. Choose show all workspaces. On Workspace 2, I've got my logger running. See how that... Look at that, man. That's nice. That's nice. Um, but let's change it to from that to show the desktop. Boom. Okay? And that's what... That's what uh, <clears throat> Hot Corners do. I really haven't had to use much of this stuff here. I'll show you how to turn off that one window snap because it can get kind of annoying. You can you can be moving things around and hit that edge and not realize it. And, and it, to me, it gets annoying. And you'll find that in this section, window tiling. Um, where is it? I just turn it off. There. Now it won't do that. See. Okay, um, have I used any of these other um, applets within system settings? Not really. Notifications, controls, you get you can get little pop-up notifications up here when events happen. Like, you know, if a, if a drive starts filling up, it'll let you know if you mount a drive or unmount a drive or that type of thing, you know. Um, you can change your panel settings here, um, that being your panel. The equivalent of task man. No, um, the task manager is uh, very similar in Linux Mint to Windows 7. Um, 
I don't even know what Windows calls their uh, panel anymore. <laughs> Is it that a hoot? I really don't know. I thought it was called, uh, yeah, who, who the hell kid knows? Who cares? <laughs> anyway, that's notifications, that's panel, preferred applications. There's the same in Windows. You can control, um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Privacy, I made a change there. Um, I turned off this. It's on by default. Remember recently accessed files. Yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> um, let's see, startup applications. If anybody has any interest with Linux startup application tweaking to make your system boot faster, I can talk about it, but there's no need because it boots so dang fast anyway. Um, workspaces, I showed you how up here there's a little applet to switch workspaces, or I can reach around you and hit control all right and left arrow um, well that's where you would uh, control how many workspaces and blah 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 let's see I've never messed with anything and oh yes I have too mouse and keyboard um, I've changed um, the mouse pointer speed to suit my liking and yeah you know, that's where you control your mouse and your touchpad power management the only thing I've changed there on this laptop on this ThinkPad is to um, set it as such when the lid is closed I want it to suspend regardless of its power and uh, yeah I want it to behave the same whether it's plugged in or not anyway um, so yeah that's all if you ever want to see a synopsis of your system that'll tell you I've shown it before um, administration never had to change anything there you can make your login window you can customize it make it look nice and uh, but anyway that's system settings I've almost never had to use it because Mint Linux Linux Mint it just runs right out of the box I've never had a single issue with Linux Mint um, a little hint, a little, let me make this window bigger. Look at these S X G E S files. Those are created when I save a video editing job I'm doing. I'll always save it before I render it in case the system, uh, in, in case I need to redo it. Once I do the editing, I want to save it. You can spend a lot of time editing a video. And I've, I've had 40 of these, 30, 40 of these XGES files. I think, I think Linux users are far more, far more likely to use the terminal. <laughs> you know, let's say you had 40 of those XGES files. How would you find them all? How would you delete them? One way would be to right-click and arrange items by, uh, by type. It, that'll at least group them all together. And then, but I don't like my arrange items. I like them arranged by name. So that means after I delete them, I've got to go back and redo that. You know, honestly, it's just as easy to do this. Now in Linux, um, in, in Linux, the command ls is the same as the dir command in DOS. And it's a list. And you'll see the XGES files. And in Linux, you don't use a, a DEL. You use RM for remove. And um, the same. Oh, oh, no, Chuck, what did you do? Oh, it's so hard typing around a tripod. Yeah, so, you know, my I'm like, look, this can be done in three seconds. And it takes me three minutes. So there it is, you know. If I do another LS, you'll see they're gone. And smoking fast. And they're gone. So, you know, honestly, man, it can be a heck of a lot easier just to use your terminal to do something like that. What I think is funny is Linux users, some Linux users, the man, there's some that are hardcore and they're usually ThinkPad users, aficionados. 
And these these guys look like father time, man. They're like in their nineties, man. These guys, if they they won't, uh, they don't use a mouse. They don't use a touchpad. They use that little red eraser pointer device that's buried in between the G and the H and the B key on my keyboard. And they, they type and they use the pencil eraser. You know what I mean? Um, if they want to run a spreadsheet, damn it, they're going to type L-O-Calc. Right? That's what they're going to do, man. <laughs> uh, anyway, let me see. What else did I want to show? Um, let's see. So we talked about the advantages and benefits of Linux. Um, we talked about the system settings, the equivalent of the Windows control panel. I talked about deleting files in mass like I just showed. Okay, now I want to show one more thing. What I'm curious about in Windows is, well, I'm not really curious about it. I want to show something. I'm going to go see these two. Um, these are launchers. They point to spreadsheet files and they live here, okay? right there. Um, what I wonder is how Windows handles links. Um, let's take this file for example, my RF Tools spreadsheet. Now if I drag it out of there and press Control and Shift at the same time, you can see that the little hand now has a chain link. Okay, and I'll drop it there. Now I've got a link and you'll see on the icon, it's got that little arrow right there. And um, in Windows 7, there was a utility called Tweak UI, and you could use it to rid your hyperlink icons of, uh, not hyperlink, your, your link icons of uh, the, that arrow. And um, in Linux, I can do the same thing. Okay, we can rename this. Okay, so that's just a link that I dropped, a symbolic link. It's called a sim link. I'm going to right click it. Let's make it better. Um, let's change its icon to something different. Okay, and let's change its name to duh. Okay. Now we've got a we've got a link to that because I access these all the time. I don't want to I don't want to do anything to get to them. I don't want to go to the start menu. I don't want and you can't drop a text file link on the panel. I wish you could. I wish you could. I wish it would do let you do that and create a launcher on the panel, but it won't. See that it won't. So. Another way of doing what I just did, you can right click and choose make link. And if I do that, there's a link and you can just drag it out of there and rename it and do, you know, what you want with it. Okay, so there's another way of doing this though. There's another way of doing this. And here's my Linux hint. Be careful with your file names. Do not, if you wanna make life easy for yourself, if you, you're a newer Linux user, you might want to not have spaces in the file names if you're going to do what the stuff like this. Because, let me show you why. Here's, here's my preferred method of putting a link to a text file on the desktop. I'll right-click on the desktop. I'll choose to um, create a launcher here. And now, I'll call a um, da. We made one called da. Let's make one called da. And this is a spreadsheet. So it's going to use lo calc as the command. And you'll see that this OK button just became active because it recognized that as a valid command. Now I need to show it the path to this file, right? And in Linux, a great way of getting the path is right here. Triple click, copy it. Okay. Um, I think the default view. Oh boy. Hang on. I think the default view 
Sometimes it does. Oh, come on, man. If it causes me, uh, wow. There, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, let's go back to where we were. This is a default uh, view. It has like buttons here to show your um, the path, and uh, you can just change that by ch this toggle location entry. We'll change it to that and conveniently highlights it for you so you can copy it. So that'll be the path to that file, right? You can paste it there. Now we need another forward slash, and now we need to tell it the file name, okay? And here's where you can run into trouble with spaces. I'm going to use this file here that has the file, has the spaces, okay? Um, you can type it, or if you want to copy and paste, choose properties. Copy it. Okay, come back to your launcher. Now I'm going to hit Control V because it's easier. There. There's the file name, right? I'm going to use my arrow keys so you can watch. Let's let's go to the left. There's the file name. There's the uh, forward slash and the path. Hopefully, I haven't lost you. Okay, and let's uh, give it the same icon so that you can see that there's no arrow. And there we are. It's uh, Linux is ask Mint is asking me. Would you like to add this launcher to the menu? Also, it will be placed in the other category. No thanks. Go away. Leave Bozo alone. Okay, so here's our launcher with no dat, with no link arrow on it. Isn't that pretty? But the problem is, it won't work. It's a broken launcher because of those spaces in the file name. Watch. See? Okay. And here's my hint, man. Right click, choose properties, let's edit this. And I'm, if your file name in Linux has a space, all you have to do is at the beginning of that space, add a backslash. See that? It's the opposite of all the other slashes. These are all forward slashes. And again, at the beginning of the space, you add a backslash, right? See? Right there, man. Let's close it, and it should execute fine. Okay. I wanted to show you that. On Windows 10, I doubt there is even a way to get rid of um, arrows on a link, you know? And I insist on this so that I can quickly and conveniently access my two um, electronic spreadsheet files, you know? And, and you can use this method, this launcher, your launcher can point to anything, you know? It can point to a picture. I used to have a, an icon here. Um, pointing to a map uh, of the U.S. when I was still trying to work QRP, worked all states. I finished that, but while I was still plugging away, that way I could just edit my map and color in the states as I worked them, and it was fun, and I did it a lot, and I wanted an icon right there on my desktop, and that's the only icons I want on my desktop, my two spreadsheets, and if I'm actively working on a project, you know, on air, a map maybe right? But uh, you can create a launcher to that. You want to do it again together? Here, let's do it again together. Let's right-click, create a new launcher here, name, uh, let's call it map, okay? <laughs> I'm reaching around you again, man, giving you a reach around. <laughs> That's command. Um, Uh-oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, command. I think it's called X Viewer. Yeah, 
yep, the OK button became active. So that's it. Now we need the path to that where the fold where the image is. I'll copy that path. I leave my view set to this. I want to see a text-based path because of, I do. I don't want to see those buttons here, right? Anyway, so let's give it to path. I'll hit Control V. Now we need a, a forward slash. Now the file name. Let's copy the file name. Go back to the launcher. Paste the file name, and there's a space in the file name, so you got to have a forward slash, a backslash, and we can give it a um, some kind of. Since it's a picture, we'll give it a headphone icon, <laughs> right? Wow, that shows up nice, doesn't it? <laughs> Hang on, man. Oh, that's even worse there. Now you can see it. Matt. Oh, yeah, I blew it. Oh, something, uh... Oh, because the folder, this is, I'm glad it did that. The folder itself, um, I have a folder called, in pictures, called Potomaps. Well, Potomaps is a space. You need the backslash here, too. Try that. Boom. Fast too, man. Click. It's fast, man. And I find that handy. You know? Um, let's see if there's anything else. I want to exhaust this because I'm going to chop down the Michigan cacti today. It's time to chop down the cacti. Um, <laughs> I want to measure it. I want to talk about the dimensions of each of the elements. Um, yeah. Because I've had a couple of viewers ask what the dimensions are, and heck, I don't know. And it's kind of hard to measure when it's vertical like that. And I want to install the 17 meter scab radiator permanently, like the other wires. You know, I've just had it staked in the ground next to the cacti while I experimented with a 17 meter wire, and it works gloriously and uh, has no effect on the overall system. So. Yeah, so I'm, I wanted to do this final Mint Linux, um, Linux Mint video and exhaust the topic. And I consider this just kind of a first look for uh, noobs or first look for uh, Windows users into the world of Linux Mint 20.2, um, a modern... Oh, one more thing. I installed, I was installing some SDR software because of that dongle art gave me. Check this out, man. I, I thought this was an SDR program. Yeah, it's not. Let me turn my volume on. Check this out, man, called Hypnotics. TV channels? Really? <laughs> I saw this, it's like, really? USA, 18 channels? Look at all these channels, man. Yeah, CNN, really? I'd rather have a bullet in the brain than watch CNN, but let's see uh, what lies are spewing today. Right, exactly. So sooner or later has arrived. Can you believe that? Hypnotics. Go back and you can see, you know, it's got um, content for a lot of folks in the world, not just crazy Americans, man. I think that's rather cool. <laughs> Um, and that's, I've talked about the links, I've talked about deleting files, um, sometimes using terminal. I talked about that hypnotics program just now. Um, Windows set, uh, system settings, the equivalent of Windows control panel, and the benefits, I'm going to say them again. Free software, no upgrade nightmare, clean, fast, simple, not confusing, powerful, Fast boot, fast shutdown, no rebooting or shutting down if you don't want to. It's not needed. I think it's the most excellent operating system. 
let's update it. You want to see how long it takes to update. I haven't done a system update on this computer in uh, a few weeks, probably a couple weeks anyway. Um, these two files have been sitting there forever. Um, now there's an update notifier. Okay, let's update them. Um, just so you can see how long it takes. If there were a kernel being updated, then it would take longer. It would take you know, three minutes, maybe. Um, there, it's done. If you want, you can set this um, automation tab. You can you can set this to apply the autom uh, updates automatically, and you'll never be uh, you'll never know it. Or you can tell it to update them automatically and then notify you. And uh, you can set blacklist programs that you don't want updated for whatever reason. Um, you can add it there. And uh, yeah, so that's how long it took me to do a system update after not having done one for several weeks. I hope you <laughs> got your rocking, didn't I? Now it's back to the bands. <laughs> for old Blozo. Ah, oh, come on, FCC. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And uh, my next video will be the Michigan cacti laying on its side. <laughs> 73, guys. Be well.